day that you need to get your ass to theaters, all right? But in the meantime, let's talk about, like, it is such a great time to be a horror movie fan. Like, and so New Line is so, seems like such a great company to work with. Can you talk about collaborating with them on this project? Because it's a really big deal to fans. Yeah, well, it's a great uh, moment to be alive because, you know, the <laughs> it is coming back after all this time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you guys were waiting for it, right? Well, it's coming TikTok, back. TikTok, baby. And, we're, well, working with No Light was, was a, a thrill, you know, it's a, the, they have, like, the tradition of, of horror that is, like, uh, unparalleled. Uh, they were they were very collab collaborative, very, you know, open, and it was a thrill, really. Well, and that's really important for a movie like It, because it's a really beloved property, and you love the book, too, so, I mean, did you feel a lot of pressure? Not really, not really, because you know, basically the. Who is a cucumber? <laughs> well, the the idea when you when you make a movie like this, uh, and being a, a, such a fan of the book and of Stephen King, uh, it's mainly staying true to the emotional experience that you had when you read it, and and it's as simple as that, you know. And then, of course, like there's the other factor of it, which is making a movie that would blow your mind as an adult and not as a 14 year old when you were reading the book. So it's a bit of a combination of those two, sure. two ideas and, and try to make the best of it. So the pressure goes away in the moment that you that you just explore your your experience and try to to replicate and be faithful to to your emotional experience. Now, speaking of being faithful to your emotional experience, let's just get right to the clips. Can you describe the first clip that everybody's going to see? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you, as you might know, it is a horror movie, but it's not only that, it's also a story of love and friendship and a lot of other beautiful emotions. <laughs> And our main characters are the losers, as you know, and this clip basically is the first moment of the story where we see them blend uh, and start forging that friendship that will take them higher and higher. Watching him give an endorsement to this version of it. Okay. <laughs> cool. Next. No, it's open that great, of course. You know, he's my literary hero. I grew up uh, reading his stuff, and so I couldn't, you know, I couldn't be happier about it. It was you know, a deal of expectation for me because I, I didn't think of that at one point I would have to show it to, to King. Of course, I knew it, but I didn't. It wasn't in my mind at the time when we were shooting the movie, and there came that point where, where you know, we had to show it to, to Mr. King. And so I started like, you know, shaking and everything, and but it went well. Yeah, he apparently. Loved it. Yeah, he really he loved it, and I couldn't be more, more, more grateful. That's awesome. It's exciting. So uh, we you have some special guests. Can you please introduce? Yes. Why not? Let me see the faces. I'm going to introduce the first face that I see. You just saw some of them. I'm, I'm, just, like, shout, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to shout out names and see who comes first. So we have Mr. Chosen Jacobs, who plays Mike Handlon. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Jack Dylan Grazer, who plays Ed Kaplan. <laughs> Sophia Lillies, Beverly yeah. Marsh. Yeah. Jeremy Jacob. Missing Mr. Uh, Jaden Lever who couldn't be with us. Jaden pl plays Bill. Uh, and it's because he decided that he hated Comic Con in San Diego, right? Awesome. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> or he's basically shooting a movie. He's shooting film. a movie, yeah. Yeah, because he's great. Right. I'm sure he would be thrilled to be here in his, his 
uh, sad that he's not here. So there they are. Look at them. Yay, yeah, Lou! Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Who just put on the spot? Show of hands. Who ha is this? Which one of you is has never been to Comic Con before? <laughs> oh my god! Okay, so pieces of advice that I've collected for you include deodorant, <laughs> being very familiar with the schedule. Um, Non-polyester non in costumes. Correct. Non-polyester, San Diego, very flammable place. And also, speed walking. Okay, so like get your little legs ready. Okay. Um, and so, does that sound about right to you? That sounds right. Okay, there's some exercising. Nice. So they're running to the lunch, to the lunch, uh, the craft table like devils. <laughs> <laughs> to pick up their snacks. So I, I'd like to start by talking about the significance of the name The Losers Club to you guys. Can you each say just a little bit about what that means to you in your hearts after having filmed this movie, you know, and bonded with both real people and your characters with each other? I know, take it away. Um, so for me, I mean, I guess it really depends on who you ask, um, what the Losers Club means to them. But for me, I mean, it means a lot of different things, but mainly friendship, of course. And not only like on screen, but really like between us, there's, you know, we've spent a lot of time together, around, what, 60, 60 days together? Probably more, a lot more. And, um, you know, we really got to know each other, you know, much better than we probably wanted. <laughs> self-aware like that's the best thing for you is to be like as self-aware as possible um, and I think a lot of us are so like with being comfortable calling you like oh like you're self is kind of really cool um, in my opinion but uh, <laughs> I mean in real life and, and in the um, I, I think it's uh, uh, what is it okay so being a loser I think it's really cool for all losers together and I think we all have each other and we all get bullied and Aww. I'm really caught off guard right now, but no, I honestly don't. Uh, I think we're all, uh, we're all winners in a sense because we all love each other and we're all sort of discover uh, the power of being <coughs> together, uh, the power that comes from being together, and that's a scene. I'm not gonna say the name of it, but I think you're gonna recognize it pretty soon. You're right, then. Roll that one. Uh, 
uh, in that scene, were you actually throwing rocks at each other, Finn, go? No. I, okay, that's slightly disappointing. There was one, no, there was one, didn't you throw one, like a real, or one of us threw like a real one. Jack. It was Jack. Yeah, Jack threw a real one. Um, All right, Jack, let's discuss that first. Well, well, is that, well it was that there was like, because it was an actual creek, so there were rocks everywhere, and Jack like actually picked one up in the water. Actually, it was a Jack went over the top, but it was Hold on a second, fabulous blazer. That's the best part. You don't even remember. I was too into it, dude. I was like, I was too was method. I had so much like rage in that scene, and he's like, no, 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 yeah, Eddie, you gotta cut back. You gotta cut down a little. I know you're, you know, you're mad at the Bowers game right now, but just. Because when one real rock was thrown, they were like, okay, let's do let's not do that again. Yeah, because they were all foam, but um, they had like a simple one. Guys, uh, I, uh, may I humbly suggest that like later in your lives, you're going to hear from someone called the insurance company. <laughs> and they're going to oh. like, oh, I know, like, just, it's going to be a sad day. Um, but you know what, speaking of Andy, like, Jeremy down there, can you talk about like how Andy kind of got you into scenes? Because there there are a lot of things in this movie that are really hard for any actor to handle. And it really seems like you guys took a lot on. Uh, well, it was awesome because he came to us and was like, what are your suggestions on this first? So he let us give us, he let us give him our suggestions. And then he kind of was like, no, let's not do that one. <laughs> so, um, we kind of made the scenes up along with Andy, so we also had a lot of control over that. It was awesome. That's really cool. I mean, that's the kind of thing that, you know, hopefully shines through in the finished product, is the fact that these actors are creating it with you, and it's not, you know, because film is a collaborative process. Absolutely, and I, I believe that, you know, ultimately these, these guys who create the character, and, you know, I can, I can only get so far in that sense, and I can give them my, you know, everything I know about the character and everything I know about the story, but it's, it's, it's ultimately them who, who bring it to life. And then it's about how much you know, control or how much liberty you, you give them. And I don't know, how was that? <laughs> no pressure. It was? No pressure. I mean, do I hear? Do I Okay, I'll go, I'll go. Uh, so it was really cool having like a lot of control over your character because then you get a lot of freedom to put as much of yourself into the character as possible. Um, everyone did that a lot, Jack and I did that a lot. Most of our most of our dialogue between us in the actual <laughs> movie is all in, like all in the click, all of that, like the loogie stuff, that was all improv. Like all of us spitting, that was like, because Andy has this, I mean, I won't go into it fully, but we have this like spitting inside joke. Um, so I was like, why don't we just, or we were like, why don't we just make it again? Um, Oh, that sounds really sweet. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> uh, the, the word that we haven't yet mentioned tonight uh, is Pennywise. And Andy, can you talk about creating this version of Pennywise? Uh, because we just saw him, like, I don't know, basically waving a baby arm at us. And uh, it was sort of upsetting. <laughs> Well, being you know, Pennywise is one of the greatest monsters of all time, and uh, it is Pennywise is Bob Gray is uh, the idea of like you know reimagining Pennywise for me was very important to stay true to the essence of of the character, but also bring some edge to it and some some stuff that people won't uh, expect to to see. So it's a it's a very cool balance, but I think, in my opinion, what 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 we brought to to this movie with Pennywise. Can I get like a show by Screams? Uh, how scared you guys are of clowns in the audience? One, two, three. It's pretty scary, guys. And actually, this is just part one of the story, right, Andy? Yes. There's a part two, or it's a, there's a, sec a second half. In fact, you know, uh, you, of all of you who read the book, you know that there's a there's a dialogue between two timelines, and the first part of the story is uh, the losers when they're 11, and they're in the script in the in the book they're 13 in our movie, uh, and they're adults 27 years uh, approximately 27 years later, uh, <coughs> they come back to Derry to fight Pennywise. And that's the second half of the story. So yeah, there, there's a second part of the movie. Great, 
Great. So more, more baby arms. Great. <laughs> That's great. Um, and adult and armpits too. And just adult arms also. You remember Adrian, Adrian Mellon? Anyone remembers Adrian Mellon? Yeah. yeah. He gets killed at their bridge, and they anyway bites his armpit. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> it's coming. Uh, why don't we take this opportunity to do another clip? <laughs> and there's a third clip. Who would have said? <laughs> Which is not a clip, actually, but it is something more interesting, and it's uh, another trailer. <gasps> so, here we go. Yeah.